and look, today is Sunday, March 2nd. Oh, it's my brother's birthday. March 1st. Oh, March 1st. My watch doesn't account for leap year. Leap year. <laughs> Crazy leap year thing. 2020. 2020. Hello, I'm here with Greg. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Greg Threadgold. And I'm an old friend and a new friend of Sarah's. We just physically met today for the first time. Yeah. In, in her home in uh, California, so. Yeah. We're sitting here talking about ECT and telling good stories and bad stories. Not so good stories. And not so good stories. <laughs> so we decided to share. Yeah. So how many treatment do you have? I had ECT eight years ago, and I had a total of 13 treatments. And was and it unilateral or bilateral? I don't know. You don't know. Okay. I don't know. Um, I had it at the University of Utah, and um, I had those treatments over a seven-week period, and uh, it was basically a last resort for me. I tried everything else over 43 years of illness and um, nothing happened for the first eight treatments and I got even more discouraged and then on the ninth treatment things started to change and by the end um, my depression and anxiety were gone, it was gone. So I guess it worked like it's supposed to yeah. for everybody. And until I met Sarah, I thought it did work for everybody. Work for everybody. Oh, yeah. And everybody had my experience of, of uh, kind of getting a second chance at, at life. And, but I found out that's not true. And it makes me very angry. And talk to me about the anger. Um, that people who are already suffering so much, mm. um, dealing with depression, dealing with just trying to get through the day ten minutes at a time. Yeah. Um, are being taken advantage of, mm. like in Sarah's case. And as she and I have talked and I've learned more information, which I just learned more um, just a few minutes ago before we came on, um, my eyes are really open that as bottom line as it is, and I, and I don't mean to not be nice at all, but Sarah and I agree that I was treated like a human being. Yeah. And there's a lot of people out there getting treated like a lab rat. Yeah. And something needs to be done because I never knew any of this other dark side of yeah. ACT. I didn't know it existed. Well. And. When you say you didn't know it existed, what part are you talking about? The, the side of people being worse after ECT. Oh, yeah. I didn't know this, I guess I call it the dark side. Yeah. Of people taking advantage and manipulating the system and yeah. um, doing a, a short procedure for a lot of money. For a long time. For a long time. Yeah. And... Um, <laughs> just things that are just horrid and and it makes me angry and and Sarah and I have talked I mean I, I we've talked on the phone yeah. we met because we both did the same podcast a few months apart and the yeah. guy that interviewed us said you two need to meet yeah you two have two different stories and and I I've only met a couple other people that were in the process of getting ECT, oh. but, um, and their outcomes 
or or nothing like yours, mm -hmm. but it definitely didn't work like mine did. Yeah, they were feeling you know somewhat better, but and even that was theirs was being done totally different procedures than mine. Yeah, and I just thought they were just all the same. I thought you know. Yeah, because you didn't know that it had never been standardized. I had, I just figured there was laws and rules and this is how it's done. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. And I, again, I, I didn't know. And so, there's a lot of emotions. There's, yeah. um, it's not like it used to be, but you know, the first couple of times we met, I almost felt guilty that mine worked. I and, and yours, that. and yours, it's made it worse. Survivor guilt. The survivor guilt. You I'm don't like, need to feel why, that. Why me? How what, did, yeah. Why me? I um, feel the same way about coming out of the other side of the schizophrenia because I have a lot of friends that are still stuck in there. Yeah. And it's a weird feeling. How did I survive? How did I get lucky? Yeah, and but. The positive thing I've done is with this, as I call it, a second chance. Yeah. Um, at at life, um, I've become a life coach. I've written a book on depression and mental health um, that's helped tens of thousands of people all over the world, and I've dedicated the rest of my life to helping those that suffer because I know what they're going through. Yeah. And as a life coach and a professional speaker and an author, I, I get that privilege and that blessing every day to work with those people. Yeah, you were just telling me about someone who they could have been read your book and they chose not to take their life. Yeah, they came to me at a conference I just spoke to and we'd only met once before and had a brief conversation about their depression. Gave them my book and they said, ran up, gave me a big hug, and started to cry, and said, because of your book, I didn't kill myself. Yeah. You that's, saved my life. That's huge. So, we start to find out what God has in our journey. Yeah. And and how he wants us to, our purpose. Yeah. For being. For being. And, but he gives us those experiences to keep going. But he's brought you into my life to make me go even faster. Mm. Helping people. Oh. And helping you. Yeah. So. Yeah. We're, we're making plans and talking about all the different things we can do. We're plotting our, our attack upon the industry. <laughs> to do stuff so yeah we, we've we've set a goal to be on a TED stage together so, I think awesome. our two stories side by side I think would get a lot of exposure and wake a lot of people up to this I, I think I thought it too yeah I think it would be very powerful to see this success story and the abused story yeah. juxtaposed next to each other. But it is concerning to me that you are starting to develop the same symptoms I'm having where you're having intermittent problems as well. Yeah, I get that checked out. Yeah. It could be anything. It could be anything. Yeah. Um, you, I tried not to read on the internet because yeah. <laughs> you get all kinds of things on the internet. Yeah. Have you ever had a 3D MRI with SWI? I don't think so. Oh, okay. That's so. the only way they can identify micro hemorrhaging in the brain. My yeah. problems swallowing are connected to functional injury. Because bilateral treatment puts the f focal point of the chart on the brain stuff. So I have chronic bleeding in my brain stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I feel yeah. like I need a little like. <laughs> woo woo woo. woo. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
No. You have to laugh. Yeah, yeah you have to laugh because otherwise you'd spend you have to too laugh. much time crying. You have to laugh. I think, did, did you feel that the consent form was, the, the consent form explain the possible risks? <laughs> to be honest with you, I would have to say I don't remember the consent form. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of that was handled by my wife. Yeah. By the time I had ECT, I was not very functional. Yeah. Um, oh, and, neither was I. And I was, so, <laughs> I was so full of paranoia, we almost didn't make it to my first treatment. Yeah. Because every helicopter was chasing me and every car was talking about me and the cops were following me. And, yeah. And we almost turned around and went back. Yeah. And I almost didn't have the ECT. Yeah. So I don't remember that part, but I'm sure my yeah. wife read stuff and yeah. and told me where to sign. Yeah. I I had, I will tell you this, I had an amazing doctor doing the procedures. Yeah. Who had done it for 40 years. And I I believe, as far as I know, I think did it the smart way. You must have. And did it according to his the morals that he had and how to do it. Yeah, we need to get his methods then rise. Yeah, and actually, he had actually had my father as a patient years before. Oh. Um, as they talked to my brother and they, my dad had it done there, and the doctor was like then you'd probably be a really good candidate if it worked for my dad. Now, my dad only had, I wasn't there, but my dad, this is after he retired, he had a stroke. Oh. And um, fell into a deep depression, wouldn't talk to him. And I think he had four treatments. Oh. And then he was, like, new. Wow. He was... Four. He had four. Wow. Probably all he would put up with on my dad. Yeah. But he had four. And so I remember the doctor saying, if it worked for him, you'd probably be a good candidate. Well, well. Something to do with, you know, yeah. hereditary and DNA and stuff. My great grandma had too. Okay. And she ended up with a boy like this. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And the time that they didn't connect with, she just kept having strokes. It altered the cerebrovascular system. Hmm. Who so, knew? Who knew? Knew. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, we, you know, you trust. You trust. Trust people that have pieces of paper that say they're smart. Mm hmm. And All effort, licensed. Up the effort in their yeah. name. Yeah. <laughs> uh. And and they're licensed. So yeah. you can believe them. It is true. And we put our faith in them. Well, we do. We do. But now that we're together, we will put be, your seatbelts on, we world, will, because here we come. We will be a force to be reckoned with. We will do that. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to get Oprah to help us somehow. We'll figure it out. We'll get Oprah to help us. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Grace. You're welcome. <laughs>